Well, within weeks after the war ended, Oppenheimer began to voice his fears about the new weapon. And during a visit to Washington in October, he told United States senators that there was, first of all, no defense against this weapon, and because the United States was a highly urbanized society, it posed a far greater danger to us in the long run than it did to the Soviets. And at the same time, he also worried about the possibility of nuclear terrorism in the future. And during that trip in October, he had a chance to speak to former Vice President Henry A. Wallace, who wrote in his diary after talking with Oppenheimer, quote, Oppenheimer seems to feel that the destruction of the entire human race was imminent. Wallace therefore encouraged him to see President Truman. And six days later, on October 25, 1945, Robert Oppenheimer was ushered in to the Oval Office. Now, before describing the Truman-Oppenheimer conversation, I want to turn your attention to the subtitle of today's talk, Oppenheimer's Nuclear World and Ours. I'm speaking about a sliver of that enormous topic, a case study at the dawn of the nuclear age, a moment when a range of significant choices were available to our government. It was a time when roads not taken could have been. And in Oppenheimer's view, those alternative roads should have been taken. And I must remind you of this. Nothing in human history that flowed from the decisions of governments has been inevitable. No historical event ever had to happen the way it happened. The counterfactual, the could have been in history, is a unique and essential aspect of human intelligence. And it should always be recognized that options existed. Alternatives always have been available, and they always will be available. And it's this fact that there are always alternatives that makes Oppenheimer's efforts to prevent a nuclear arms race relevant and important today.